We are so grateful to have evangelist Victor Jackson with us this weekend. His wife, Louisa, James Asher, and it's Sister Louisa's birthday today. So can we give her a hand and we wish her a very happy birthday. I just can't believe that it's been two years since they were here with us. It's just almost impossible to, to imagine that, but they are here in the will of God tonight, tomorrow morning. And if your heart is open and ready to receive, God will speak to you tonight and tomorrow morning. If you're ready to receive, if you ask, you shall receive. If you seek, you shall find. If you knock, the door is going to be open. Are you ready to receive the word of the Lord tonight? Would you magnify the Lord right now as Brother Jackson comes to minister to us tonight? Oh, can you clap your hands to the Lord one more time? Praise God. The presence of the Lord is in this place, isn't it? And uh, the last time I was here, uh, I think revival started on like a Wednesday or something. And I was like, man, I came here. It was like mid-January. I was like, I came here and I can't believe there's no snow. I said, I came here looking for snow and there's no snow. The next day, it snowed all day the trucks weren't ready. Uh, spent some time in fellowship at Pastor Enzi's house. Uh, their driveway is on a bit of an incline. It took me like 25 minutes to get out of his driveway. Can you believe it? Snow, snow just, God's like, you want snow, huh? You can't even drive in snow. <laughs> you, can't even, you can't even park in snow. And... Uh, but I tell you what, I'm so thankful uh, to have the privilege to get to uh, come back. And uh, you guys know me by now. I just uh, try to follow the Holy Ghost and don't do the same thing every time. I'm not predictable. <laughs> uh, and that could be a good or bad thing, praise God. But uh, last time I was here, there were so many miracles that happened. People were getting healed. And uh, we prayed specifically for uh, people uh, that had been barren. Heard God's just been opening up wombs. People are having babies. <laughs> Miraculous. Miraculous. And uh, man, we're just so happy to be here. I give honor to Pastor Enzi and his wife and family. We love and appreciate them so much. And uh, uh, their examples uh, of faithfulness and commitment, they're such a great example to uh, me and my wife. And uh, we honor them and appreciate them so much. Uh, so thankful for Bishop Kirk and his family. We love and appreciate you so much. Thank you for your commitment, your love for the kingdom, your love for people. I honor you so much and uh, commend every one of you. And I got to meet Pastor Josue and uh, Brother John and uh, so thankful to get to meet them. Looking forward to fellowship. Give honor to my beautiful wife, Louisa, and my son, James Asher. Uh, I was going to sing happy birthday, but, you know, uh, don't want there to be a mass exodus out of the room when I try to start singing. But I'm so thankful. Uh, we get to travel everywhere together, and uh, such a huge blessing she is uh, to my life. And let, let's get into this. Let's get into this. Uh, let's open up our Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 3. Um, uh, you know, I had some things that I wanted to come and preach. You know, I had something I wanted to preach tonight, and literally I'm on the airplane, and the Lord's like, uh-uh, you ain't preaching that. And he just began to whisper in my ear and begin to drop some things into my spirit. And I pray that this will be a blessing to you. I'm just thankful to see people. Hey, man, you, you ever thought you would just wake up and thank God for that? 
It's like, oh, wow, I saw someone today. <laughs> uh, I had to preach in my office. Uh, so thankful for the patience of your pastor because I did an online thing with you guys. I had my phone on like 20 Bibles in my office. The phone was diagonal. I'm like, praise God, everybody. <laughs> Terrible backdrop, my voice echoing all over. Your pastor was just smiling. Just, I was like, this guy really loves me. He just, he knows I'm battling, but he's behind me 100%, praise God. <laughs> and uh, and I, I had to start preaching at night because I was preaching in the afternoons but my neighbors were walking their dogs and I think I was scaring them off because I was screaming in my house I'm surprised they didn't call the cops on me said hey that guy in there said he's going to kill somebody named Lucifer <laughs> so I just started preaching at night when everybody went to bed and I said, you know what, let me, I need an upgrade. I didn't know we was going to be in quarantine this long, amen. <laughs> you know, I thought it was two weeks, praise God. <laughs> and so I was like, but I've got to up my game since this is lasting for a little bit. So I got a black backdrop. I was like, oh, the backdrop's nice, but I still got my 20 Bibles with my iPhone. And so then I got the umbrellas with the lights on both sides. Y'all not hearing me out there. <laughs> I became a professional overnight, praise God, amen. I figured it out. Uh, Genesis chapter 3 and I, I want to go straight into, I'll just get straight into it. I was going to read a few things and I'll get straight to the point here. Um, Genesis chapter 3 verse 7. And you guys know every message I preach is just a little different and doesn't follow the same flow. But the most important thing is hearing from God, right? So we'll see what the Lord does here. Genesis chapter 3, verse 7. Verse 6, rather. Let's go to verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took up of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him where art thou and he said I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself and he said who told you that you were naked hast thou eaten of the tree wherefore whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat and the man said the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. The Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? The woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly thou shalt go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Verse 15, last scripture. This is going to be where I draw my thought. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. And I, I want to preach on this subject this evening, unexpected victories, unexpected victories. Uh, why don't you lay your Bibles down where you're at? And lift up your hands where you are and let's ask the Lord to do exactly what he wants to do today. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your spirit. I thank you for your anointing. Lord, let the power of God flow in this house. Lord, I'm nothing without you. I humble myself before you. I pray that your spirit touches every heart and every life. Lord, I humble myself before you. I'm nothing without you. We're nothing without you. 
But God, if your spirit can come down and do something special, if you can guide every thought, every word, every response, if you can place an anointing on them, if you can transform them from the inside out, God, we'll give you all the praise. We'll give you all the glory. We'll give you all the honor that is due unto your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you clap your hands to the Lord? Come on, with expectation, can you just... Come on, somebody let your voice out. Hallelujah! Praise God. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Give honor to the media team who I've been calling the heroes of the hour, working hundreds of hours behind the scenes throughout this pandemic. I give honor to you. And what about this amazing worship team, the singers and musicians? Thank you so much for leading us into the presence of God. Unexpected victories. Whenever we think of victory, all of us come to our own conclusions on how victory is supposed to be. And when we have such a tunnel vision in regards to victory, we will overlook victory that is right under our noses where you think victory is coming from this place, victory has a habit of sneaking up behind you and not only sneaking up behind you, but actually being behind you for five to 10 months, you not even knowing it's there. We have tunnel vision, things that we think it's supposed to be, how it is supposed to happen. And many times it comes from an incorrect view of Scripture, incorrect interpretation of Scripture, incorrect lens to see the Word of God through. One of the most often quoted Scriptures and often misquoted Scriptures is Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Romans chapter 8, verse 28, look what it says. And we know that all things work together for good, to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Um, we like to quote this scripture wrong. It's our favorite scripture to quote wrong because we like to say all things work together for our good. See how we sneak that in there? We don't even notice, do we? Come on, all things work together for our good. That, that, that's not what the Bible says. And if you think that's what the Bible says, you're going to misinterpret what God was trying to do in this scripture. It says, and we know all things work together for good. Doesn't say our good. Doesn't say your good. It just says good. Now, my question is, now, whose definition of good is this? Because you and I have different perceptions of what good is based on our upbringing, background, our history, our lives. So whose definition of good is this? It can't be our definition of good. It must be God's definition of good. For instance, if I was homeless my whole life and you blessed me with a shed, a shed about this big, I'm going to come in that shed, and I'm going to just be like, man, God's good. But if I've been living in a mansion my whole life, and I lost everything, and you come bless me with that same shed, I'm going to look at this shed and be like, this is a curse. See, you and I have different perceptions of what good is determined by our background. So it's not our definition of good in the text. It is God's definition of good. Amen. Amen. And the Greek word good here is agathos, which literally means intrinsically good. 
It's what happens on the inside that makes the trial good. So the success of a trial is not the outcome, but it's what you become in the trial that makes it successful. So even if you lose everything, God used it to make you more like him. And that is the greatest victory you can ever partake of when you take on the divine nature of Jesus. Amen. You are becoming something in your trial. You are becoming something in your pain. You are becoming something in your affliction. You are becoming something in your storm. And even if he doesn't turn the situation around, at least he's turning me around. Come on, somebody. And maybe I may not have victory in that situation, but I got victory down in my spirit. I got victory down in my soul. I got a joy unspeakable. The devil doesn't know what to do with somebody. In the middle of a pandemic, they're clapping their hands unto the Lord. The devil doesn't know what to do with somebody that's walking with peace and victory. Come on, somebody. Because my victory is not determined by what's happening on the outside. I am being conformed into the image. Amen. 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 I am being conformed into the image of God. And if I become like him, I can't lose. If I can have him by my side, I can't lose. And as long as I have him in me, when the devil attacks me, he better be careful. Because God don't like his child being attacked. And he will step up in a moment. Oh, I better remember it's the first night of revival, praise God. It's Saturday night, but something's pulling me in the Holy Ghost. I am preaching to somebody that you have been looking for the victory in your situation, but there has been victory happening right under your nose. But it's time to tune in to what God has been doing behind the scenes. And you're going to come out of your trial with power. You're going to come out of your trial with joy. You're going to come out of your trial leaping and shouting and dead. you're not going to walk the same you're not going to talk the same you're not going to clap the same you're not going to love the same you're not going to do the same things why? because something has been taking place in me Agathos intrinsically good it's what's happening on the inside that makes this all bearable Come on, somebody. Because some of us could have blew up a few times in 2020. But it's like that meme said, when you're about to say something, the Holy Ghost puts his hand over your mouth. Ah, He's a keeper. Hallelujah. Uh, We know that all things work together for good. Agathos, intrinsically good. To them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So the focus is not your situation. The focus is what's happening internally. Look at it, verse 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That's the goal. The goal is that God is using everything that comes into your life to conform you into the image of his son. And there's nothing that the devil can do but help you be like him come on somebody every time he attacks you you just gotta say thank you devil you're just making me more like him you know what you're just pushing me to pray more you're just pushing me to fast more you're just pushing me to trust more you're just pushing me to hold him tighter come on somebody clap their hands I feel the Holy Ghost unexpected unexpected victories the victories that you don't even notice you don't even notice what's happening you don't even realize what God's doing behind the scenes in the text that I read to you we see Adam and Eve getting themselves into a situation that they were not supposed to be in 
They were not designed to be in that situation. They were designed to live victorious. They were designed to walk in the blessing and the anointing of God. It's interesting that in Genesis, it starts with man in Eden. And that by the end of Genesis, in Genesis 50, man's in Egypt. In one book, he started in Eden, but he ended in a coffin in Egypt. Joseph did. Started with life thriving by Genesis 50. Now, the man of God's in the coffin in Egypt. The quick down spiral happened after this moment of obedience. And... When it happened, and I could go, and it's so tempting to go super deep into it, but I don't, it's Saturday night. I don't want to take all your time, praise God. <laughs> uh, you tempted me, though. See, you, you uh, help me. You know, some people question, they say, well, well, why did God put the tree in the middle of the garden? Here's why. It's because God's love language is obedience. And as long as Adam and Eve did not eat of the tree, it expressed their love toward God. Notice that all of mankind fell into sin. Watch this. You got, here it is. They fell into sin. Here it is for eating a piece of fruit. Brother Jackson, does that mean if I eat a pineapple, I'm going to die? <laughs> no. But there may be consequences if God told you not to eat it. See, 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 the power is not the substance of what the fruit was. It was what it represented. It's, a, it's if God said, don't touch a blade of grass, and they touch the blade of grass, they're in sin. But it's interesting because Adam and Eve were in sin. We all believe that, right? But listen, they never lied. They never, they, never, they never stole. They never committed adultery. They never murdered anybody. But they were in sin. And according to our standards, we would say, well, they're going to heaven. They never lied. They never stole. They never murdered. They're good people. Oh, Lord. But you see, man looks at the outward appearance. But God looks on the heart and Jesus. Jesus said, it's the inside that defiles a man. But we have minimized sin to an outward expression alone. So somebody lies and you're like, well, you're in sin. But God looking at you and say, hold on, you've got pride in your heart and you're just as much as sin. Amen. They sinned and the first thing that they did was they hid themselves. They hid themselves. And I love it in verse 8 because the Bible says they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And God called unto man. I love this about God. Is that when man messed up, God didn't turn his back on man. God didn't say, you know what? I gave you one chance. You messed up. I'm out of here. No. The Bible says he came looking for them. He said, where are you? Because I still got a plan for for you I, I still got a promise for you I still got a future I don't care how much you messed up I, I don't care how much you almost gave up there is a God that's calling your name saying where are you I got a plan Amen. When you mess up, God doesn't just look at you and say, you see, now I've got to judge you. No. He likes coming around and looking for where you are. He likes stepping in the middle of your pain just to give you a promise of future victory. Look, when it seems hopeless, when it seems like you can't make it, he'll step down right in the middle of it. That's what the Holy Ghost is. The Holy Ghost is a comforter. The Greek word paraclete, which literally means the divine presence coming along alongside to help you when you get the Holy Ghost I feel like preaching right now with the Holy Ghost is a comforter it comes down where you are to assist and help you when you fall God doesn't stand above you and says come up here what's wrong with you no he comes right into your mess and he sits down with you and says we're gonna get out of this together you're gonna come out better than you went in you're gonna come out stronger than 
They mess up. But he comes, the presence of God comes into their mess up with the intent to rectify the situation, with the intent to change the situation. And the Bible says the first consequence, the first thing that he told the enemy was he said, I'm going to put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Right in the middle of a mess up, God released the greatest prophecy. Right in the middle of failure, God released the greatest potential. He released the messianic prophecy, the greatest prophecy in the Bible. The seed of the woman is going to bruise the head of the serpent. That's what they call the proto-evangelon, the first good news, which was a prophecy that Jesus would come through the loins of Eve and destroy the works of the devil. In the middle of their problem, he gave them a promise. In the middle of their failure, he gave them a seed. In every failure, there's always a seed of restoration. There's always a way to get back on track. Uh, hey man, y'all, y'all are hungry for the point. See, y'all pulling this out of me. Y'all hungry. You're like, get to the, yeah, I know something's coming, Brother Jackson. I know something's coming. Uh, well, I got to tell you what it is. Because uh, the prophecy was that Jesus uh, would come through uh, Eve's loins uh, and destroy the work of the devil. It was a prophecy of Calvary. It was a prophecy of the cross that the seed of the woman uh, is going to bruise the head of the serpent. Uh, and it says uh, that that the serpent uh, is going to bruise his heel. Uh, that was a prophecy of the death of Jesus. That was a prophecy uh, of the cross. And it's very interesting uh, that when Jesus was on the cross being mocked all around when they put those nails in his hands and those nails in his feet remember that not not one of his bones were broken they put that nail right in a place called the Lis Frank space line in your feet and you can put it in such a spot that when it goes through it doesn't break a single bone put it through and when they put it through uh, the pain that Jesus was enduring uh, on that cross while he had the crown of thorns blood all over his brow blood all over him uh, feeling forsaken by everybody the disciples had forsaken him Uh, he's on the cross bleeding for mankind Uh, he's crying out he's thirsty Uh, he's suffering for the sin he feels the weight uh, of the sin of mankind Uh, he feels the weight of the curse uh, of mankind kind. Jesus was not a liar but on the cross the Bible says he became sin for us. He wasn't a liar but on the cross he became a lie. He wasn't an adulterer but on the cross he became adultery. He became sin for every single one of us while he was on that cross feeling all the pain that you and I should have felt going to hell in judgment because of our disobedience but it's interesting uh, while he's on that cross uh, while he's on that cross with te- with tears uh, while he's on that cross in agony uh, uh, these researchers say a doctor Stephen Martin he said it this way uh, that whenever these people were on the cross uh, they would literally have to bring up their body to get breath uh, and they would die from respiratory failure uh, or their heart would burst either their lungs would burst uh, or the heart would burst uh, because they're in a bent over position uh, and they would use their arms to lift up they'd have to lift up on the cross uh, and to just breathe a little bit uh, and then go back down again breathe come up uh, and then go back down again uh, and they said one of the greatest ways to breathe uh, was 
that the, the people on the cross uh, that they would straighten their knees meaning they would push up off of the nail uh, and when they would push up off of the nail to breathe uh, they come back down again uh, push up off of the nail to breathe uh, come back down again uh, and it would just be a tormenting process uh, while his back is getting ripped uh, by that cross uh, but it's interesting what they found out these researchers uh, and what these doctors said uh, that as he's going up and down uh, his heels uh, are on the cross uh, and as his heels are going up on that cross uh, the flesh on those heels are getting ripped uh, and getting bruised uh, and while he's getting bruised uh, I feel like preaching right now uh, while he's gasping for air uh, he's getting victory I gotta preach to somebody uh, that's been going through a struggle. Uh, you've been gasping for air. Uh, you've been doing whatever it takes to survive and you didn't realize uh, while you're in a battle, uh, while you're in the pain, uh, while you're crying out, there is victory happening under your feet. I wish somebody would clap if you believe that. I wish somebody would shout if you believe that. Come on, I wish somebody would open up their mouth and give glory to God in the middle of it. Hey! Uh, they're mocking him saying if you're the king of Israel come off of the cross while he's being mocked while he's being misunderstood while he's bleeding while he's just gasping to get a breath of fresh air while he's feeling forsaken by everybody he was getting unexpected victory because those heels were getting bruised and as long as those heels were getting bruised there was an assurance that victory is coming victory is on its way and I come to tell somebody uh, that's been in the middle of a storm uh, I come to tell somebody uh, that's been gasping for air uh, I come to tell somebody uh, that's been overwhelmed with pressure uh, I come to tell somebody uh, that may have lost your job uh, you may have lost a family member uh, you may have lost somebody close to you uh, in 2020 uh, while you're gasping for air uh, while your muscles are tense uh, your heel is being bruised uh, and you can be sure there's victory happening right in the middle of everything going on uh, there's victory there's victory happening right in the middle of everything you're going through and the worst moment in his pain he defeated pain you're not getting it in his weakness, he was defeating weakness. In his struggle, he was defeating the struggle. The same is happening for you. The same is happening for you. In your pain, you are defeating pain. In your hurt, you are defeating hurt. Come on, somebody. In the middle of it all, you're still getting victory. You know what the greatest sign of victory is? Look where you are today. In the middle of everything that you've been through. Come on, somebody. That is a great sign that there's something that's coming. talk about what he went through physically but you got to think about it he was the god man the theanthropos the god the god man he, he, he felt what you felt he wept at Lazarus tombs he was touched with the feelings of our infirmities we don't talk about the psychological pain that was coming into Jesus mind while he was battling on that cross and that's where you and I can relate because you've been in psychological warfare for this past year you've been battling with your mind come on somebody who am I ministering to you've been battling with depression you've been battling with anxiety you try to keep a smile on your face like nothing's wrong but you've been crumbling under the weight of pressure you try to act like everything's okay you try to lead your family and smile and try to play games with the kids and try to let them know nothing's wrong but in your mind you've been in such a battle you've been wondering are you ever going to see the light of day am I ever going to be able to breathe 
breathe without being afraid to die? Am I ever going to be able to have an authentic smile with all the hell that I've been going through? You have not seen a light at the end of the tunnel. You've been in the same situation for a while. You've been wondering, is victory ever coming? And God's looking at your heels and he's saying, you don't understand. While you're in the middle of this struggle, you are defeating the struggle where your kids won't have to deal with it like you're dealing with it and the next generation won't have to go through it like you've gone through it oh somebody lift up your hands to the Lord for a moment oh hallelujah oh, there's unexpected, unexpected victories in this house come on lift up those hands somebody talk to the Lord for a moment oh God you're still here in the middle of it all Oh, hallelujah. It's a miracle. You're here in the middle of it all. Oh, it's a miracle. You got a sound mind in the middle of it all. You got a sound mind in the middle of the struggle. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By the time they laid that body in the tomb it was bruised and blistered and flesh exposed flesh and it was a sure sign that death is being defeated is that amazing he died so death could be defeated that's ironic. How, how do you defeat death? Well, I'm going to die. What? Yes, yes. I become it to get victory over it. I go through it to get power over it. Uh, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I may have gone through depression, huh? but depression doesn't have power over me. Huh? I've got power over depression. I may have dealt with anxiety in 2020, but guess what? Anxiety is gone. And guess who came out on the other side? Me and my family came out on the other side. And we've got dominion over every spirit. Unexpected. Unexpected. Wave a hand if I'm helping somebody. Wave a hand if I'm helping somebody. <sighs> you didn't even realize it. You didn't even realize you were walking in victory. You didn't even realize it. You didn't even realize the things that God was preserving in you while you were going through it. You didn't realize huh, the things that he was putting into your spirit huh, while you were battling. You could only see the battle, but you didn't realize underneath the battle huh, there was a seed of victory huh, that was beginning to blossom huh, with your tears. Huh, and as those tears begin to water that seed, huh, victory begin to blossom and begin to bud. Huh, and you haven't seen it yet because you're waiting for the whole tree. Huh, but God said, look at the seed. Huh, there's a leaves on it come on there's hope on it there's something growing on it and it's going to overpower yeah. here's what I love here's what I love about what Jesus did on that cross for us Oh, help me. The Bible says that through him, we are more than conquerors. Uh, through him, we're more than conquerors. Here's my question. How do you become more than a winner? Y'all gonna throw me out of here tonight. He said, we're more than Congress. Hold on one second. How do you become more than a winner? Because when you win, you win. He said, you're more than a winner. 
What do you mean, God? What he's saying is, look, you didn't just beat the devil 10 to 1. You beat the devil 100 trillion to nothing. It wasn't even close. I said, when you're going to come out of this, you're going to say, devil, it wasn't even close. You tried to make me backslide, you weren't even close. You tried to make me lose my mind. Oh, I got to break down the word of God for you tonight. Woo! Think about it. More than a conqueror, more than a conqueror. Look what it says in the, in the Bible, Revelation, that, that we overcome him by what? The blood of the lamb. And the word of our testimony. Hold on. I thought the blood was enough. The blood is enough. The blood already takes care of everything. But he said you overcome him by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. Meaning God already got all the victory. But he wants you to just rub it in the devil's face. Huh, and just start testifying. Huh, and say devil. Huh, the blood took care of you a long time ago. Huh, and it's taken. Because God said, I don't just want to win. I want you to start speaking uh, and tell the devil that he wasn't even close to defeating your family. You just got to start talking. You got the victory. You just got to start talking. You just got to start talking. My family and I, we are overcomers. We're going to come out of this better than we went in. We're coming out of this with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We're going to come out of this dancing, leaping, shouting. We're coming out of this with fresh fire. We're coming out of this with fresh direction. The devil doesn't know what to do with somebody. It's testifying while they're going through it. And the Bible says Jesus endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. He doesn't know what to do with people that are speaking joy uh, while their heels uh, are getting torn apart uh, he doesn't know what to do with victory 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 you're, you're more than a conqueror it's not even going to be close oh you thought you was going to backslide no he's not even close you got too much anointing for that. Come on, be serious. Come on, you got too much Holy Ghost in you. Oh, help me, Lord. When the devil presses you down, you know what pushes back up? The Holy Ghost pushes back up. Oh, Lord, he can press down the flesh as much as he tries to. But sooner or later, the Holy Ghost in you is going to speak up on your behalf. And I heard the words say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I want to I wanna break it down. Uh, are y'all excited? Man, I love the word of God. Man, the word of God just blows my mind. I don't even, I just, I don't even know what to do. Amen. I just, I just get up and start talking. I'm like, God, I don't know. You know Praise God. Here I go. Amen. <laughs> Here we go, Lord. Wish me luck. <laughs> uh, it's just so beautiful. It's, just, it's, it's a keeper, isn't it? Whew. That's what's helping you have peace in the middle of everything because all this stuff has been prophesied, hasn't it? And, and victory has also been prophesied, hasn't it? So, look, we good. As long as I stay connected to him, we good. Let me ask you a question. How, how, how many, uh, you see, there, there's people here that, that feel like they don't have anything to offer God, that they don't have anything to offer the world. Uh, you, feel like, you feel like nothing. And so you, when everybody, when, you, when people start talking about victory, you start looking at everybody but you. You're like, hey, victory's coming. Hey, victory is coming. And you're like, hey, I got nothing to offer. I, you know, I, I ain't expecting victory for me. And, and, and you feel like nothing. And the devil tries to use that against you and condemns you and says, look, you're, you're nothing. You'll, you'll never get victory. You're, you're nothing. You're, you're a zero. And, and let me ask you a question. How many gods are there? There's one Lord, right? Okay, I got to work this out then. I got to work this out. There, there's one God, right? Oh, okay, I need your help. I need your help. All right. All right. Now, now. You're going to be my illustration, okay? So, so here's who you're going to be. You ready for this? Are you all ready for this? 
you're going to be God. Oh, wow, that's an awesome illustration. I mean, that's a great illustration. Bro, come on, that's, I mean, I could have said Judas. I could have said, you know, I, I said God, bro. I mean, amen. So, 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 so here it is. So, so you're going to be God. You're, you're one God, okay? All right, so come over here for me, God. So, so, so you're one God, but there's a lot of people out there that, that feel like nothing, that feel like zeros, okay? So I want you to put your hand out like that, just right there, okay? Uh, you don't feel like much. I want you to come up. I want you to grab his hand. Uh, okay. That's 10. I want you to grab his hand. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Hurry up and grab it. Okay, that's 100. I want you to grab his hand. Okay, grab it, grab it, grab it. That's 1,000. I want you to grab his hand, grab it. Okay, that's 10,000. You may feel like a zero, but as long as you stay connected to the one, you will always have value. I said you may feel like nothing, but you stay linked up to the one. There will always be a value. There will always be value. If God's not in it, let there go. Let the hand. If God's not in your situation, then yes, it's hopeless. But if you put God in it, oh Lord, all of a sudden, there could be value that comes out of my trouble. There could be value that comes out of my... Okay, okay. Now, 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 I know, I know y'all got the revelation, uh, y'all got the revelation of putting God in the middle of it. All right, come on, come on, God, put God in the middle of it. Uh, but uh, if you, if you work 60 hours uh, and you get a check that looked like this, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, you mad. Hey, man, come on, somebody. You, hold on one second. Uh, I know we got the revelation of putting God in the middle of it. Uh, come on, come on here, God. Uh, and I, I know we got, we know that he's a protector. Y'all like to put God uh, behind it all. Uh, you know God's behind it all. But you get a check like this, zero, 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 one. Uh, oh, you real mad. Uh, you going back to work wanting to fight somebody. Uh, you try to put your Holy Ghost on the side for a second. Come on, somebody. Uh, you get a check like that, you're a little angry. But whenever you grab God by the hand and you put God before everything, when you put God before everything, when you put him before your troubles, when you put him before your weakness, when you put him before your pain, I said there's value coming out of it. I wish somebody would clap their hands if you believe in it. I wish you would stand to your feet and lift up your voice if you believe it. Come on, clap again. Shout again. Dance again. Run again. Praise again. Leap again. There is victory. Unexpected. Unexpected victory. See, you thought you were nothing. And God's, look, God's like, you think I'm going to condemn you while you're reaching out to grab my hand? You're too valuable. Oh, Lord. And you just start thinking about God and then your husband, your wife, your son, and your daughter. You mean more to God than you realize. For you to come to the house of God feeling like nothing, but you bring your kids with you. Come on, somebody. And y'all link up to God's hands together. There is a value that is birth. I want everybody to stand where you are. You can make your way back, gentlemen. Thank you for helping me. I want you to stand where you are. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I come to preach the weight of depression off of your shoulders. I come to preach the weight of oppression off of your shoulders. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I come to preach the weight of condemnation off of your shoulders. Oh, Lord. And I come to tell you, underneath all the pain, underneath all the struggle, underneath all the attack, there is unexpected victory taking place. There's victories that are happening behind the scenes that you haven't seen yet. 
You just got to make a decision that I'm just going to hold on to God's hand. While I'm gasping for air. While I'm going through the ups and downs of life. While I feel like I'm on a roller coaster. With every news cycle, something has me up and something has me down. While I'm battling with what's going on in the world, I know that my heels are getting bruised. And I am reminded that it's in that moment and that spot that there is victory being born. I want you to grab the person's hand next to you where you are. Ah, Ramoho Sataya. I want you to grab the person's hand next to you and I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to make a decision that we're not going to let go of God's hand because there's victory coming. I want you to make a decision as a family. We're not going to throw in the towel because there's a victory that's coming. We're not going to give up because we know there's a victory coming. Come on, come on, somebody make a decision right now. Somebody make a decision right now. There's unexpected victories taking place. Ah, Rohotaya. We're gonna come out of this better than we went in. We're gonna come out defeating the thing that tried to defeat us. We're gonna defeat the weakness. We're gonna defeat the struggle with our struggle. We're gonna defeat the hurt with our hurts. We're coming out better. We're coming out more thankful. We're coming out with a deep love for God in the name of Jesus come on pray over them right now I feel the Holy Ghost beginning to move right now Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ I feel victory beginning to sweep over this auditorium somebody's getting a revelation right now that we are not going to be defeated that we're not going to throw in the towel that we're not going to backslide that we're going to come out better than we've ever come out that we're going to come out with more joy that we're going to come out with a deeper commitment that we're going to come out with the heart after God that we're going to come out in the name of Jesus with better jobs with better promotions with better anointing in the name of Jesus come on you need to find a place to pray right now there's places all over the this room there's places to pray all over this room but you need to prophesy victory over your family you need to step out of your seat and come find a place to go after God if you want to pray in your seat you can but you need to link up with somebody and begin to prophesy there's a victory that's coming there's an anointing that's coming there's joy that's coming Come on, that's it. Link up with somebody near you right now. Lay your hands on somebody near you right now. And begin to prophesy the victory. Come on. Encourage them. Don't you give up now. Don't you give up now. God's not done. God's not done. 